And welcome, Lisa Waters Lane. I mean, it just feels, I mean, you can see the 70 degree weather. <laughs> on I mean, the horizon. The, the actual spring date is uh, a couple of weeks away. I mean, it just mm -hmm. kind of, you, you can tell the days are getting longer. Yeah. Spring is actually when day and night equal the same amount. Mm -hmm. And then the days just get longer from there. Yeah. Uh, fall is the same thing. Spring and fall, just kind of, that's when the, the equinox. The, the equinox. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. That's good. <laughs> I was just thinking it's the same time, both sides. <laughs> I just know the days get longer in the yeah. spring and days get shorter in the fall. Mm -hmm. So, that but true. snow's all melted. So pretty yeah. much. Uh, so this feels good. Hey, so I need yeah. to let people know. Yeah. It was your birthday last week. Yeah. I didn't say happy birthday, so I'm saying it now. Happy oh. birthday. Well, dear. there we go. Happy Should we birthday. tell them how old you are? Yeah, big five. Just crossed over the five <laughs> mark. No, don't tell them how old I am. We'll let them guess. What do we got? What kind of questions do we got this week? Is sure. it uh, anything really good, I hope? Oh, they're all good. Always good. So Bonnie lives out in Pesca Valley in the Granville division. And she wants to know if you think a blue spruce will do okay in those kind of yards of that condition, or is there something you would recommend that would perform better? So spruce will do very, there's some beautiful spruce in Presque Valley. I mean, that whole Valley area, all the way up that Valley goes right to Chino Valley, Paulden, that whole area, right on over to Skull Valley. Mm -hmm. So they do great. The main thing to watch in that heavy clay is that whole Valley area means are just very drought hardy. And so they, they don't need, they don't want to sit their roots in a lot of soggy, mm -hmm. wet, gooey soil. They like dry. They want to dry out in between water cycles. Right. And so a little secret, because our first house was right there mm -hmm. by, by Granville that we had back in the early 90s. Yeah. Uh, we killed a lot of plants <laughs> trying to figure out how to grow out there. And the secret was, especially in the evergreens, leave plant in a slight mound. So mm -hmm. leave maybe two, three inches of the root out of the ground and then mound or crest up to to cover that root ball. Uh, so that no matter what, how much rain you get, the irrigation goes, no matter what kind of caliche layer you got, at least two, three inches of the root ball can, mm -hmm. can breathe. So right. it's like leaving its nose out of a, your nose out of a pool. Mm -hmm. It just lets you keep going. Yeah. You might get a little pruny and crusty in your toes, but you can still breathe. You're still alive and going. Right. And so the plants will adjust to that. I would say that's a good technique for really anything out there. Yeah. Uh, from fruit trees to, to shade trees, mm -hmm. but especially the evergreens from, right. from the Arizona cypress, blue spruce, uh, cedar cypress, ju junipers, pine. they're all going to pine. They're all going to grow well out there. You'll see some beautiful specimens. It's just, you got to make sure the, the soil drains. If you're in doubt and when you dig your hole, mm -hmm. just fill it up in the morning. And if you've got water still sitting there at the end of the day, you've got problems. Right. Evergreens won't like that. I mean, yeah. Uh, maybe cattails or, you know, <laughs> water lilies, they would like that, but you dug a bathtub. What we do then is we'll dig a chimney. Uh, we'll dig a portion of that bottom of that hole out. We see the next soil band. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you see that next soil band coming up out of that hole, the water just drains automatically. Mm -hmm. So some, some techniques that sure. can help you with that. So yes, you can grow sp uh, spruce in that Prescott Valley, uh, Granville area. Absolutely. I agree. All right. Next question is from Doug. He really wants to put an Eastern red bud nice. tree into his yard, Ready, Doug. but he wants to know how far away from the house foundation should that, can that tree go? Well, Doug, that's not even a problem. It's a small, it's a small root ball. That's a, so red buds grow wild here. So it's a native variety that grows just, it's a native. And so they get up even a fully mature, the biggest specimens go out maybe, 10 feet or so, and they're not prone to lift walkways, lift foundations. Mm -hmm. I would say you, you put it real close, right to the walkway, you'd be fine. Mm -hmm. So put it where you want it, where you mm -hmm. think the canopy. So it's a tree that's going to get about 15 feet tall by about you know, 10 feet wide, something like that. Mm -hmm. Just think in those terms and, and you're good to go. It should, should thrive here. It doesn't get wind whipped. It has a beautiful flower. We've got some starting to show flowers here. Yeah. You're starting to see right. kind of a leading. They're cracking, showing some color. Mm -hmm. They're always one of the first ones to bloom in spring. And then they have that beautiful heart-shaped leaf that's just so gorgeous. Right. Uh, so it's a great tree for here. Okay. 
All right. Our next question is from Tony. He wants to know, is now the time to be putting plant protector on the oh, pinyon pines? Yeah. And also, is it okay to do it when the soils are wet? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, good questions. Uh, yes. Pine trees. Pine. So, yes. You need to take care <laughs> of pine trees. This is serious. I mean, it just is so serious this year. I mean, yes. we've got uh, a scale on, on, Pinion pines that I've, I haven't seen this early ever. Yeah. The the aphids have been on the ponderosas. I've never they never went away this winter. It never got cold enough, and so you really want to protect those. And so so let the other audience know, plant protector is a liquid that you pour right at the trunk of the tree, and it absorbs underneath the bark this kind of bug repellent. So it keeps the bark beetle, ips beetle, flathead borers, the things that eat your evergreens, mm -hmm. pretty much. It keeps them out. So absolutely, it is time. Now, the other question goes to, uh, is it okay when it's wet? It's actually better when the soil is wet. You'll get better uptake from the tree. So it will go further up into that canopy when the, when the ground is moist. So we've had some moisture the last couple storms. The ground is wet. This is ideal. I would say go ahead and fertilize at the same time. Even your natives, you folks that are up in that Highland Pines, Groom Creeks, you folks that are in that, that, in that wild land interface, take care of those natives. I know they've been there for 100 years without any assistance from you, but we have changed mm -hmm. the environment right here. I don't know about global warming. I don't know how you feel about that, yay or nay. I don't even care. But I do know we have, we have heat island effects where you put roads in, need more help from you than than let's say they were just a forest 20 years ago when we were growing up as kids yeah. well, 10 years ago when we were growing <laughs> up as kids yeah <laughs> so yeah plant protector fertilize and i would say all your evergreens take care of them nurture mm -hmm. them natives you really only feed once a year whereas spruce pine junipers the other things you're fer fertilizing two, three times a year. Mm -hmm. But I would say definitely take advantage. It's, they're about to push their new spring growth. Encourage them to be healthy, new candle growth on your evergreens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So humic, putting humic acid in, would now be a good time as well? Yeah, humic is, is humic acid. So the organic gardeners, they know what that is. It's kind of a supplement to your to, to the fertilizer. It actually tickles the feet of plants. So they put on larger root mass, kind of mm -hmm. expands. It, it encourages additional roots. And so it feeds the worms and mycorrhizals. It feeds the soil. So the plants go, whoa, this, look what's going on with the soil. Yeah, I got, I should root more. And then it picks up more of that, that food that you put down with evergreen, stay away from these liquids. You don't mm -hmm. for big trees, you do not need miracle Row. It, it, none of it will be absorbed by the plant. You're just wasting your energy and money and time. Right. Put a granular organic food. We've made one for evergreens. It's called 744 All-Purpose Plant Food. It's cottonseed meal. We put some sulfur in there, some iron. It really The, the, the acid-loving plants, just they love that food. And they'll get greener, better growth on that. So all-purpose food, plant protector right away. By the end of the month, I would say. Okay. That's all we got. We're out of time. Again. Thank you, Lisa. So Ken and Lisa Lane, the Mountain Gardeners, mm -hmm. be right back after this.